Hey everyone, uh, in this tutorial I want to basically show you how you can create a hash map in Java. This is a common interview question when the candidate also has to create a hash map. Um, basically just not use the one Java provides but create your own. And this is important because it allows you to learn how the hash map is actually implemented and why the complexity is what it is. So many people use it. So you might have heard the hash map is like a is basically just like a linked list of entries and yeah that's true and so we're basically just going to be creating that in this application that we built today so let's go ahead and get started I'm using Eclipse you can really use anything but Eclipse is preferred if you want to follow along so let's just go right click new Java project and we'll just call it um, <clears throat> let's just call it hash map tutorial okay so we have this right click SRC new class driver and click click this public static void main so this is essentially our main class right over here okay so as I said hash map is something native to Java so if I just type in hash map then there is my hash map this is already implemented so we need a key and a value type so let's just you know integer integer and you know hash map is equal to new hash map and then there's certain methods um, so let's just go through them so hash map dot so the first one you would interact with is put and put basically allows you to add a key and a value so remember hash map is just like a dictionary in Python it's just like a key value mapping so this allows you to add a key and a value get allows you given a key to get the value back and remove basically removes the item or the entry from the hash map so if I added like a maps to B and I removed a so then my hash map right now would be empty so that's basically the idea. So if you already know how a hash map works, feel free to skip this section. But what I'm going to do now for the next like, couple of minutes is just basically just explain how the hash map is actually working and how we go to implement it into Java. So here's the idea behind a hash map. So as I said, a hash map is basically just an, just an array. OK, you can think of it as an array of entries. So these things right over here, this thing right over here, we're going to call this an entry. OK. And this entry can have multiple entries pointing to it. For instance, this is, you can think of it as a, like a link list. So this is one entry. Now, if there's another item here, it's going to be like a link list in which that this arrow is kind of like the next parameter, right? So this basically right over here, this just means like next, right? So that's what it means. So how do we go from hello world to something like this? Like how do we actually get it inside the array? Well, the idea is, the, is as follows. So hello is the key and value is world the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compute the hash code of the key now a hash code is basically just you can think of it as like a sequence of numbers that describes an object okay it describes an integer a string it describes something so we're going to get a, a series of numbers now after we get those series of numbers we're going to have to map it into one of these locations right over here and i'm going to talk about how to exactly do that once you do that so let's say we do hello world and you know, it maps to the value three. So then I'm going to add it. So here, here's my array. I'm going to add in the entry. So remember, this is an entry of hello world. Okay. So now let's say, uh, you know, we do this for a bunch of other stuff and eventually we run into something. So let's just say our key is YouTube and our value is rocks. Okay. So YouTube rocks. That's what I want to add. Let's say that the hash code of YouTube matches the hash code of whatever hello was. Well, what this means is that it's going to map to the same index, right? It's going to map to three. So there's already something at three. So what can we do here? So what we're going to do here is we're going to add it after, after the last element. So this element right over here is going to be added as YouTube rocks. So remember, this is hello world. It's going to have a next parameter and this is going to be YouTube rocks. So that's basically how the put works. If it's not there, you're just going to add it. Otherwise, if it's there, you're just going to add it to the end of the list or end of the link list. Now there's one more thing we have to understand about put and it's that put doesn't just mean add it, but put also means like replace. So in the case for hello world, if I already put this into the hash map, that's good. But if I do put hello and then YouTube, then this world right over here has to change to YouTube. We're not going to create another key called hello because the key already exists inside the hash map. So that's something we have to keep track of. So, you know, we'll get into all that. Uh, but let, let's just go ahead and start writing our hash map. And I'll refer back to this diagram multiple times so we can actually see how it's working. So 
I'm going to create a new class. So right click new class and let's just call this my hash map. Hash map. Okay. So remember, a hash map is generic. So if you're not familiar with generics, don't really worry. I'll guide you through them. It's not really that hard in terms of this tutorial. So how we declare the generic is you have these angle braces, and then you just specify the number of generics you want, you know, like A, B, C, whatever. We just want two. One generic is going to refer to the key value, and one generic is going to refer to the value. Value. So in the case for like when we initially created it, key's value was like integer, key's data type was integer, and value's integer type, value's data type was also integer. But obviously it doesn't have to be like that. Now what I'm going to do is, if you've ever created like a linked list in Java, you can think of this as like the linked list, and inside we're going to have a node class. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is like this entire thing, this entire thing right over here, this essentially is a hash map. Okay. So this is like my hash map, my hash map, this entire thing. But one of these entries, so these specific entries right over here, this is what's just known as an entry class. Okay. So it's basically just like a link list. You can think of this entire thing as like a link list class and this thing right over here as like a node. So we're going to do similar logic right over here. That's why I said that a hash map, you can think of it as a link list of entries. So everything inside the array here is going to be of type entry. Okay. So we need to create this entry class. So how are we going to do that? Well, you could create it outside, but I just prefer creating it inside because we already have this hash map class. So might as well keep everything, you know, inside one one Java file. So let's just do something like this private class entry. And remember entry also needs to take in the generic because think about it an entry, it needs to know, okay, what is the type of my key going to be? What is the type of my value going to be? So in an entry, the data types or the fields we have is we have the key where the value and we have like a next parameter, which points to another entry. So what we can do here is we'll have three things. So private k key, private v value and private entry this will be next okay so initially all of them are not initialized but what we can do is when we get an entry so when we get the constructor well who do i expect in an entry i expect a key and I expect a value because that's what i'm storing so i'm going to add exactly that and this dot key is equal to key the value equals value Okay, so you might be thinking, like, what about this next parameter? Why not we're adding it right over here? So the next parameter is actually taken care of in the put, because when we eventually implement put, we're going to check to see, okay, um, is there already something here? In that case, I'm going to modify the next parameter, the next field of this object right over here, and I'm going to set it to a new entry. So the next is directly modified by the put. So that's why we're not going to bother create a con constructor field for it. Okay. So we have this right over here. Now I'm just going to create my getters and setters. And so let's see. Um, would we ever need to change a key? No. Ch keys are not meant to be changed. Keys are just meant to be added. Okay. Uh, or, you know, like um, gotten. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do public k get key return this dot key. Okay. What about value? Well, obviously I might need to get a value, right? Because in the get command of a hash map, I need to get back the value given a key. So I'll do public v get value return this dot value. Now what about one more thing? Remember in put, it's possible that I already have a hello world and now I'm adding in hello YouTube. But what do I need to do in this case? I need to change the value. I need to change world. So in that case, I also need something called, well, this will be void set value. And it's going to take in a value, right? So we have our value right over here. And I'm just going to set it. So this dot value is equal to value. So now we have our entry class. And remember, this entire thing right over here just refers to one of these things right over here. Okay. Now what do I need to do? Well, I have an entry class. Now I need to create an array of this of these entries. And that's essentially what a hash map is. It's an array of entries which act like a linked list. So let's go ahead and create this array. So we have an array here and usually the array is of size two to the n, you know? So in the case here, we have it as size two to the three. So it's eight slots. I'm just going to do a little bit less than that. And the reason is because I actually want collisions to appear. 
you know, if you have too big of a size, collisions might not happen. And if you have like a really good hash function, you might not get collisions at all. Um, it's rare, but you might not get them at all. So in this case, I actually want collision because I want to show you like how this works. So I'm just going to set my size to five uh, just for demonstration purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do private final int size is equal to five. OK, so now that we have this, well, what do I need? I need to create this array. OK, so this is my array that I need to create and it needs to be of type entry. So let's do that. So array, so private entry, kv, and this I'm just going to call my table. Okay. So now think about, I'm not initializing it right now, but the best point, to, best time to initialize it is when I actually call the constructor. So remember, I'm calling the hash map. So how it actually works is I do hash map, blah, blah, whatever is equal to new hash map. So whenever I do this, this is when I want to initialize my table. So what I can do here is I can have a constructor. So public hash map or my hash map. And I don't need these. What I'm going to do here is table is equal to new entry of type size. So all this is going to do is just going to allocate space for this array. This array is of type entry. OK, so that's essentially how that's the basics of how a hash map works. You can think of it as we have like a basic wrapper class and then we might have like something called an entry and we just have an array of these entries. OK, so now let's go ahead and do the put operation because that's kind of the main one you do. That's like the first one you do when you get a hash map. There's nothing inside. So obviously you want to put. So let's do put. Now, the put doesn't return anything, right? The put is just you, we're just adding it. You could return it, but uh, usually you don't really do that. So public void put. And well, what does put need? Well, I want to put in an entry, right? And let's see what entry needs. Entry needs a key and a value. So I'm going to do k key and v value all right so now you know you could be fancy and check to see whether key is null or value is null but i'm just gonna try to keep things simple here and not really worry about any of that but you know you should mention in the interview like um you know i'm just ignoring this for now but i can always come back to it if you want to if, if you want me to check for nulls so okay so what do i need to do so let's go back here and so we see so this is the key this is the value the first thing i need to do is get a hash code from a key and remember, hash code is just like a sequence of numbers that describes something. So there's multiple ways to get a hash code. You can create your own hash function, whatever. But in Java, we already have this function that you can do on basically any object. And what it will do is it will give you a hash code. So what I can do is I can do int hash is equal to key dot hash code right over here. So you can see it returns a hash code value for the object. So I do this. So this is going to be a random number, something like, you know, something like this. It doesn't really matter. But the main thing that we need to do is the next step. This might be like a big number, but we need to map it somehow into our array. So, you know, you might know a trick to do this, but essentially the trick is, is that we're going to take the modulus. OK, so if we do modulus. So you can do modulus as remainder. It's basically just a remainder of size. So what this get, what this is going to do is if I have this big number and I do modulus eight, then I'm going to get any number between 0 and 7. OK, that's the idea behind it. I'm going to get any number between 0 and 7. The remainder can be any number between 0 and 7. That's the idea behind it. So now that we've done all of this. Now, first thing I do, I can do is I want to check. I want to check to see if there's anything inside this location, because if, if, if I'm adding it for the first time, then, you know, th there's not going to be anything there, which is going to make our life a lot simpler. So. The first thing I'm going to do is actually get whatever is at that location. So how can I do that? So what I can do now is I can just do entry. And I'm just going to call this E for entry is equal to table at hash. And just to make clear what this is doing, we have a hash. This is more like hash index. We have our table and I'm just going to get the value. So let's say we have three. I'm just going to get whatever's inside this location right over here. Initially, there's not going to be anything inside the hash, right? it's going to be completely empty because it's our first time inserting. So what I can do is if entry is null, then what I can do is table at hash is equal to new entry with the key and the value. So let's see what exactly is happening right over here. So K and then V. So essentially the first time I insert it, there's not going to be anything there. So I'm going to say, okay, I want you to create an entry. So then this location right over here is going to be this thing. OK, so you can basically think about. This. will go right here, so now we have like a entry. Everything else is still null, 
but this three location, it has an entry. Now that's just one case. If there's no items there, so if there's no items at this location, then I can go ahead and directly add it. But, you know, it might not always be like that. I might have a collision. And remember how a collision works is that two, uh, more than one key can map to the same hash code, which means it would map to the same index. So in that case, I have a collision. So here's an example. So this information right over here basically tells us that we had a collision and we represented it as a linked list. So that's what we want to do. We want to represent this as a linked list. So let's go ahead and do that. So otherwise, so what this means is that there is already data here. And so we need to move forward until we find a good spot to insert. This good spot might come in two locations. Either the key already exists, in which case we have to update the value, or the key doesn't exist, in which case we put it at the very end. So let's handle both cases. So if the key exists, then I want to update the value. So a very easy way I can do this is basically, I'm just going to go ahead and traverse through the linked list. So I can do while e.next does not equal null. What I can do here is I can essentially just check to see if e.getKey is the key that I'm looking after. Well, what this means is that the key already exists in the hash map. So all I need to do now is update the value. So let's say I'm right over here and I do like hello YouTube. And let's say this right over here is hello. This right over here is hello. All I need to do is update this value to be YouTube. So what I can do now is I can just do e.setValue, whatever the value is passed in. Right. And then I can just return because, you know, I've done my I've done my job. Otherwise, if this is not the case, then I'm just going to advance E. So E is equal to E dot next. Now, you might be thinking like why I'm doing E dot next does not equal null instead of like E does not equal null. Now, the reason for this is the following. So let's say we're let's say we're handling this big list, this big thing right over here. So let's say we're looking at this right over here. Well, in this case, I'm going to go here. And let's say this is not the key. So I'm going to go here. Let's say this is not the key. I'm going to go here. Now I'm going to see that the next value is null. So I'm going to break out. So the first thing we actually have to check to see is, okay, is there a key here? Is the key matching here? Because we're going to break out the moment we see that um, null is going to be the next thing. So the first thing I actually want to see here is, okay, does a key match? So I'm just going to copy this value, copy this piece of code, and I'm going to paste it outside. Okay. So if e.getKey equals key, we just set it and return. Otherwise, what do we need to do next? Otherwise, we need to add another value, right? Because what this means is that we've went through every single one of these entries, even the last one. The key didn't match in any of them. So what this means is that the key doesn't exist. So I need to add a new one. How can I add a new one? Well, what do I need to do is I need to create another entry. And this other entry will be something like this. Something like this. So I will create another entry and this last element that we're on, I'm going to modify the next property to point to this entry. So in code, what that looks like is e.next is equal to new entry. And this is KV of the key and value. Okay. And this is, this is why we need to keep track to e.next does not equal null instead of e does not equal null. Because if there is no key, then I need to add it to the end of the list. But how do I do that? If this is something like this, if E does not equal null, then this is only going to break out when E is null, which means I can't do this because this will basically mean null.next, which doesn't really make sense. You're going to get a null pointer exception. So this is why we do E.next does not equal null, because we want to keep a reference to the last item. So after we've done all of this, then I can basically just return, uh, or actually I don't need to return, so I'm basically just done the function. This will take care of two things. It will take care of the case where Either the key exists, in which case I need to override it, or the key does not exist, in which case I need to add it to the end of the list. So that's how we get all this information right over here. Okay, so let's say now you have a key. The next thing you might want to do is retrieve the value based on a key. Because remember, a hash map is just like a dictionary in Python. It's just like a key value mapping. So let's do something like public. And remember, here we're actually going to be returning something. We're going to be returning the value and get and I'm going to be passing in the key, so k key. Now again, you can check to see whether you know this is null or not, but for the purposes of this, of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it simple. Now, what do we need to do? So let's say I give you the key as hello. Well, I need to find out where hello is in this 
array. So again, I have to repeat the steps. I need to calculate the hash code. I need to find out the array index, and then I need to see wherever, if I see hello or not. So let's do that. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy this. So all this is doing, it's just computing the hash and the value at the table. So let's say I'm doing hello, and let's say I'm right over here. Now, there's two cases. If there's nothing over here, so if this place right now, if this is just null, well, what does this mean? Well, this means that I'm asking for a key which doesn't exist in the table because based on my key and based on my hash code, I'm mapping to a certain location, but there's nothing there. And this means that your key is not in the hash map. So in this case, all we need to do is if E is equal to null, in this case, all I need to do is just return null because there's nothing there in the hash map. Your key does not exist. Otherwise, well, otherwise what I need to do is I need to actually go through each one of these things right over here. And this is basically just like going through a linked list. So if you know how to do that, it's basically just the same thing as that. So what I can do right now is while e does not equal null, keep doing that, sorry, well e, this is what happens when you have auto completion on, well e does not equal null, I'm going to check to see if e dot get key is the key that I'm after, then all I need to do is just return the value, so e dot get value. Otherwise, I'm going to move forward in the linked list, e dot next. Now, let's say we go through the entire thing, let's say we go through this entire thing, but it's not there. The key, I couldn't find the key. You know, I mapped to a certain location, I went through all the elements, but I couldn't find your item. So what does this mean? Well, this means that your key doesn't exist. You know, I went out of bounds, um, I'm, at, I'm at null, there's nothing there, so the key does not exist. So what I can say here is that after this, I can just do return null, which means your key does not exist. Okay, so that's get. We've done put and we've done get. Now we have to take it. Now we have to understand how remove works. So you can basically implement remove in two ways: either remove by not returning anything, but I'm going to follow the way remove works in HashMap. And if you take a look at this, so if we do new HashMap dot remove, you can see that it actually gives us back the mapping. So it actually gives us back the mapping which is the value. Um, you know, you can return the value, but in this case, I actually want to return the, the key value pair, so the entry itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So for instance, let's say I want to remove, um, let's just say I want to remove this, this item right over here. I'm actually going to be returning this entire object, not just the value, but this entire object. That's what I'm going to be doing. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you know, if you understood so far, you understand that these are basically just entries, right? So the return value of this will be an entry. So what I can do is public entry, and this will be a remove, and I need to take in a K, key, okay? So similarly to the other two, I need to see all of this. First, what I need to do is based on the key, I need to calculate the hash and find the value in the table that the hash points to. If it's null, then right away I can see that Okay, you're trying to make me remove something, but there's nothing like that in the table. So I'm just going to return null. There's nothing for me to remove. Otherwise, now, if you've ever done removing in a linked list, you know you have two cases. Either it's like the head you're removing, or it's one of the, one of the, I guess, children you're removing, or one of the further, further descendants you're removing. If we're removing the head, so what would that mean? So let's say we're removing this right over here. So let's go back. Well, what this basically means is if e dot get key is equal to the key. So basically, what this means right over here is that the current key I'm on is being removed, which is the head. So this is the head. Then what I need to do is first of all, table at hash is equal to e dot next. What I'm exactly doing here is let's say I'm removing this right over here. Then the table Suddenly now, instead of pointing right over here, it needs to point to this next value, this value right over here. So that's what I'm doing right now. So if I'm removing the head, then table at hash is equal to e dot next. I also want to remove anything that e is pointing to. So this will be null. And the reason for this is because if I don't do that, then when I eventually return e, it's going to also return a reference to each one of these, which is not what I want. I just want E to be on its own. 
So that's why I'm kind of removing this thing right over here, this arrow right over here. And that's completely fine because what's going to happen is this is going to point to this arrow anyway. So it's not like we're losing any data. So that's the idea behind that. So what I can do right over here is e.next equals null and then return e. So after that's done, if we're still here, so what this means is that we're removing from the middle of the linked list. So in this case, it's, it's basically just like a regular removal in a linked list. I need to keep like a previous. So what I'll do is I will set entry previous is equal to e and then e is equal to e dot next. And then you probably know this, it's just removing from a linked list. So what I can do now is for while e does not equal null. And I can do while e does not equal null because I don't need a reference to the last item because I already have it in previous. So while e does not equal null, if e's key matches the key I'm after, then well in the same in the same case, so let's say let's say I actually want to remove this item, then what's gonna happen is previous is gonna be here. This is going to be my entry. I want to set previous as next equal to entry.next. So this directly goes here. So now what I can do is I can do previous.next is equal to entry.next and then entry.next again is equal to null and then we're just going to return the entry. Okay, so that's basically how we're going to remove. Now, assuming we've done all of this and we're still outside, well, what this means is that I couldn't find your key. You know, I found a location for it to hash to. There was items there. I went through all of them, but your key wasn't any one of them. So in this case, I'm just going to return null. So that's basically how you implement this. So let me just get rid of this. Uh, before I show you like it actually working, I just want to copy and paste two things. Uh, so this will be in the description. This is just going to help me print out stuff. So for the entry, and remember the entry is just these things right over here. The two string for that. So when I print out an entry, this is what will happen. And for the hash map itself, this is what will happen. So let me just walk you through what exactly I'm printing here. This is the right class, yeah. So in the hash map, this is basically like your array index, right? So it's basically just a pointer. So this is going to print 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever. And then it's going to print table at i. And if you look at table at i, this is just an entry. So if I go back to the entries to string, you can see it's just printing the key, what it maps to, and then it just moves forward. So if we had something like this, then it would print key value, and then comma, and then key value, and then comma, key value, etc. So that's that. Let's go ahead to the driver and run the code so I can show you how it works. So I already have some code here. And let me just comment down a lot of this. So here, essentially, all I'm doing is I'm just mapping a bunch of stuff. So A to B, E to F, H to P, etc. So here, let me just print it out. So as you can see, the first thing we're doing is we're printing out D0, 1, 2, 3, and this is the entry, or the table at I, if you want. So as you can see, this is how we're actually mapping. So A maps to B, uh, E maps to F, H maps to P right over here, etc. Now you might be thinking, like, one maps to G, but instead we have one maps to H. And the reason for that is because we've updated the value here. So remember, it's important that you don't create a new key, but you update the value if it already exists. So that's what we're doing here. And you can see this is null, which means there's nothing there. Okay. And this is actually why I set the size to 5. Because I said, if I set the size to something like, um, you know, like 15, or let's not do 15, let's just do 16, then what you're going to see is, you know, like a lot of this is going to be null. You're barely going to have collisions. So that's the reason I set it to 5, because I actually want to show you some collisions. So now we have that. So let's do this and let's test out our get. So if we do get A, we should expect back B. Perfect. Let me do remove A. So if I do remove A, I'm getting back A to B, which is good. And so now let me just actually remove and I'll print it out and I'll print out the old one. So what you can see now is the old one had A to B the new one doesn't, it directly goes to P to 2, which is exactly what we wanted. Let's say instead of removing this, I want to remove P, so maybe like an intermediate node, then it's a, essentially the same thing. We have A to B and then 2 to 6. So this is how you create a hash map in Java, your own implementation. Obviously, there are some more methods, so hash map or hash, 
hash map dot just contains. This is pretty easy. You just check to see if the get returns a null. There's also a clear, which is pretty easy as well. You just set the table equal to a new table. And those are essentially the methods that correspond to an abstract class, or not an abstract class, a hash map. So here you can see like why it's really O of one lookup, because if your table is really you know, it's of a decent set and you have a good hash code, then you're going to end up with something where you don't have a lot of collisions. So it's going to be right there. It could be that you have collisions, in which case you're going to have to traverse to the end of the list, but most of the time you might not have this. So anyways, this was the code. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, just as a summary, we have our entry, we have our table, we have our put, get, and remove. And here is just how I am testing it. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the description. And if this really helped you out, just let me know. It really means a lot. So anyways, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.